everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna, and this is day 20 of my book of Wayne. Let's get going. So, today we're going to be talking about should I read these books, if it, whether they are popular or not. I think it'll be fun, so let's see how much I can. I might be reading, I don't know, but let's get going. So, the first one is Mexican Gothic by Celia Moreno Garcia. After receiving a frantic letter from her newly wed cousin, begging for seven to save her from a mysterious doom, Noni Tabonia heads to a high power place, Iceland's house, in the Mexican countryside. She is not sure what she will find. Her cousin husband, a handsome Englishman, is a stranger, and Nomi knows little about the region. I have heard about this book. I think it was also being compared to the Hacienda, which I love, so... But this book also did have mixed reviews, so I don't know about that. Um, but I really did love Hacienda. I thought it was great, so I might need the Mexican Gothic. It really does sound interesting. It does kind of sound similar to, to the Hacienda, so I might need it. My next one is The Seven Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampire by Grady Hendrix. Flying green tomatoes and stale Mongolias meet Dracula in the southern flame and supernatural set in the 90s about a woman's book club that must protect the southern urban community from the mysterious and handsome strangers who turns out to be a blood-sucking fiend. So I have heard about this book as well. I don't know if, if I'm going to read it. Probably not. Just because I kind of have a thing against vampires. I know I made a whole video about books about vampires. I know, but they're just, they're just so cringy and Dracula is the only exception, Bram Stoker, that's the only exception, but I don't know, I just, it just sounds so cringy. My next one is Hidden Pictures by Jason McCulloch. I widely invented to inventive spin on a supernatural thriller about a woman walking as a nanny for a young boy with strange and disturbing secrets. So that has a lot of standard formula and a lot of thrillers. Everyone has secrets type of thing. I might mean it. It does sound interesting, so I might mean it. My next one is Stephen King's If It Bleeds. It's number two in Holy Give Me. Bleeds is a collection of four new novellas, Mr. Helen Gans' phone, The Life of Chuck, Rat, and the title story If It Bleeds each pulling readers in intriguing and frightening places. I mean, I do like Stephen King's. I have watched The Shining. It was interesting. Uh, I did not read the book. I do want to read the book and see if it's somewhat... It's probably going to be different than the movie. Uh, but I do want to read Carrie and It. I think those two are the most intriguing books from Stephen King. So this one, I'm probably not going to read. I don't know, it doesn't really sound interesting, so I might pass it. The next one is The Only Good Idiots by Stephen Graham Jones. The creepy horror of Paul Tremblay meets Tommy Orange there there in a dark novel of revenge, cultural identity, and the cost of begging from the tradition. From the, from tradition. So I do have, have read, like, heard about this book. It kind of sounds interesting, so I'm really intrigued by, by the book cover as well, so it sounds really interesting, so I might need it. My next one is The Last House on Nino Less Street by Katriana Ward. This is a story of a serial killer, a stolen child, revenge, death, and an ornery house at the end of an ornery street. So we got the usual typical haunted house possibly, and so... Yeah, I do want to read it. It really sounds interesting. And we got the usual haunted things, the last house, the haunted sightings, possibly. So I do want to read it. And speaking about uh, Grady Hendrix again, we do have How to Sell a Haunted House. I have heard so much about. Thanks to the haunted house and a thrilling new novel that explores the way your past and your family can haunt you like nothing else. I don't think your past can haunt you. When I go to bed, depends on what the situation is. I think they can haunt you, but I don't. I think I will skip it. I'm not really interesting enough, and I have issues with overhyped books, and I think this is one of them. Just because it's been all over my social media, I keep seeing it everywhere. So I might skip it just because of that reason. I just have issues with hyped books, even though. 
I don't keep pushing some on my channel, like the Narrow by Kate Alice Marshall, that is a really popular one right now. But only because it really sounds interesting. It really does sound interesting, and I really want to read that book too. So, yeah. I am skipping on Hellbent by Leah Maduro. I read the first one. It was okay. I just didn't really enjoy it. But I'm not. I'm not gonna read the sequel. My next one is What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. So this is the retelling of Edgar Allan's Poe classic, The Fall of the House of Usher. When Alex Easton, a retired soldier, receives word that their child friend Madeline Usher's died, they race to the ancestral, ancestral home of the Usher's in the remote countryside of Navarre. What they find there is a nightmare of fungal growths and possess wildlife surrounding a dark pulsing lake. Madeline sleepwalks and sleeps in strange voices at night, and blood of Roderick is consumed with the mysterious melody of the nerves. So, it sounds interesting, I might read it. It has a like, possession from what I can see, and trance, and yeah, it just sounds really interesting. And next one is The Children on the Hill by Jennifer McMahon. This has been inspired by Frankenstein, which brilliantly explores the airy mysteries of childhood and the evils perpetrated by the monsters among us. So I don't want to read Frankenstein. I'm actually thinking really of something about Frankenstein. But that's coming out in November. I know I should have done it this year, but but in, I can't really do it separately. It's I have to do it for that video in November, unfortunately. But unless I save it for next year, so oh, I will see. Uh, is that interesting enough? I do want like to have classic retells, so I might need it maybe. My next one is Chasing the Monkey Man by Richard Chisman. To, the story, to this story of a small town evil that combines the storytelling of Stephen King with the true crime suspense of Michelle McNamara. A clever, terrifying, and heart treading work of meta fiction, Chasing the Monkey Man is the ultimate marriage between horror fiction and true crime. So, it sounds so far interesting. We got the FBI going on, we got someone trying to investigate with the mutilated bodies of, of missing girls that's being turned up in small Maryland town. Sounds like the perfect horror movie as well. Um, I think I'm gonna read it. It sounds really cool, so I think I wanted to read it. The next one is Bloodline by Jess Lurie. It's enough to drive some woman mad, and a tale inspired by real events, pregnant journalist Joanne Harkin is cautiously excited to follow her fiancé back to his Minnesota hometown. After spending a childhood on the move and chasing the screams and swirls of news which city, like she eagers to settle down Lily Dale's motto, Come home, forever, couldn't be more inviting, and yet something is off in the picture-perfect village. The friendliness borders on intrusive. Joanne can't shake the fact that every move she makes is being trapped. So we got the stalking going on, we got the perfect, but not perfect picture going on. So it sounds interesting enough, um, but I don't know, and I feel like it might be repetitive because of the whole stalker situation, but I do kind of want to read it, but I don't know yet. My next one is Survivor Song by Paul Tremblay. In a matter of weeks, Massachusetts has been overrun by insidious rabies like virus that is spread by saliva. But unlike rabies, the disease has a terrifyingly short incubation period of an hour or less. Those infected quickly lose their minds and are driven to, be, to bite and infect as many others as they can before they immediately succumb. Hospitals are inundated with the sick and dying, and hysteria has taken hold. To try to limit its spread, the Commonwealth is under quarantine and curfew. But society is breaking down and the government's emergency protocols are faltering. Why does everything happen in mesh suits? Like, what the heck is happening over there? <laughs> but this is like a zombie-like story. We got the apocalypse, we got the virus, which isn't too far from what we had in those two years. I don't even count the museums just because we lost those two years. But. It sounds interesting enough, so it kind of reminds me of The Last of Us, but um, it sounds interesting, you might need it. And the last one is Near the Bird by Christina Henry. 
A woman trapped on a mountain attempts to survive more than one kind of a monster in a truly inducing horror novel. <laughs> so, are we facing ourselves as a monster? <laughs> I don't know, but in that's an interesting kind of reminds me of the hike. I can't remember who it's from, but it has like that same isolated thing going on. So I might read it. Uh I don't know, maybe. I might not read it. So who knows? Me it just has to be interesting enough to hold my captive, so so yeah, so those are the all the books, so should I read these books? Uh let me know what you're interested in and Please like, comment, subscribe so you'll be notified every time you post and I will see you in my next one.